outbreak occurred in Beijing after two months of uh, zero uh, new infections. The numbers are falling. Um, 17 uh, new infections uh, reported yesterday in China, 14 in Beijing. The other three were imported. Um, and that's down from 21 the day before. So although this isn't disappearing, um, it's falling, it is under control. And the way Beijing has achieved this is basically a massive testing. Um, it's testing about 300,000 people every day now. Um, tests are focusing around the Xinfadi uh, wholesale market, um, people associated with that, people in high-risk professions, uh, couriers, food delivery drivers, uh, people working in restaurants, in beauty salons, and in markets. So all of these high-risk people have been tested at the rate of 300,000 a day, as I said. And they've also designated uh, different neighborhoods around the, around the south of Beijing um, as either medium or high risk. And that will determine how much restriction there is in and out of these neighborhoods. So it's not really a lockdown, as you're saying. I think if, uh, if an apartment block, if, if there's a case recorded in an apartment block, yeah, that apartment block will get locked down. People will not be allowed to leave it and they'll be quarantined their own homes for 14 days. But apart from that, um, the rest of Beijing is going on as normal. Um, I was in a very crowded restaurant last night. Um, people are wearing masks, uh, but there didn't seem to be much social distancing going on. Um, and it's not like it was in March. In March, um, there were much more strict uh, restrictions on movement. For example, you couldn't get into an office block if you didn't work there. Um, and now that's it. It's, it's not as uh, strict as it was in March. So I think uh, although uh, the number of uh, infections hasn't been reduced to zero, um, it's almost down to uh, single digits every day. And this has been achieved, as I said, through uh, a huge program of testing. Uh, how concerned? I mean, an authority is talking about, uh, of course, no one knows for sure, but the possibility of a full second wave. I mean, we're hearing this a lot uh, throughout the world from various countries. What's the situation in China? Well, um, that's a very good question. And all eyes are on Beijing now to see how well it can control and hopefully um, squash this new wave. Um, but it needs to be said that we we're only on 14 uh, case, new cases yesterday. That compares to 45,000 in America. So um, I think by and large, it's, it's been quite efficiently controlled um, and not um, at the cost that it was imposed um, in March and February. Um, when, uh, you know, an entire city, an entire province was basically locked down. Now, we're not back there. Um, the economy in Beijing, I should say, is is functioning, apart from the Xin Fadi um, area in the south. Uh, that's about um, 20 kilometers away from central Beijing. Um, Beijing's economy is, is running as by and large as, as, as normal. Um, so we're not seeing uh, the kind of economic cost that was uh, um, imposed um, when the virus first appeared. Okay. Uh, yeah, as you said, definitely a big difference from the way it seems that China has handled things and results and what we're witnessing in the United States right now. Thanks so much for being with us, Stephen Rebe. Well, Iran's government has approved additional measures to intensify the national combat against uh, COVID-19 amid a surge in fatalities. Masks will be considered obligatory in covered spaces where there are gatherings. This will be imposed as of next week from July 5th. Mask wearing will be mandatory until July 22nd and will be extended if necessary. President Rouhani also said provincial committees in areas with a large number of infections can extend limitations on a weekly basis when needed. On Sunday, the Iranian health ministry reported 144 new fatalities from the coronavirus. That's the highest daily death toll since the government eased lockdown measures in April. Iran's total deaths are more than 10,500 out of 222,000 cases. 
the second round of municipal elections is underway across France. The vote is being held in more than 5,000 towns and cities. The main battleground is Paris. Now, the city's mayor is an influential figure in French politics and will oversee the 2024 Summer Olympics. The vote is the first big political test for President Emmanuel Macron since the coronavirus crisis began to ease in France. Opinion polls suggest a dire outcome for Macron, whose party could fail to win in any big city. The second phase of the elections was scheduled for March 22nd, but it was put off to June 28th after the virus restrictions came into force across the country. And with that brings us to the end of this uh, World News Bulletin. Thank you all so much for staying with us. This week's listeners are special on this Sunday, June 28, 2020, with me, Atefer Fani. Listeners are special is this Sunday program where your views matter most. Contact us and tell us what you think about our broadcasts. If you have any messages for our listeners around the world, then record your voice and send it to us and get your voice heard. Remember, listeners are special is your program, it's your views that are important. And as usual, many of you have taken the trouble of sending us reception reports. As you know, these are very useful to us, especially to our technicians and engineers, because these reception reports enable us.